Hey everyone, Retro Tech Dad here with a follow-up video with the Absolute Handheld. Now this is actually the DVT2 engineering sample, and so the Absolute team reached out to me and let me know that they were sending this out for me to evaluate, and I'm pretty happy that they did as I can follow up with my viewers and continue to track the progress that the Absolute team has made since the first engineering sample. Right off the bat, you can see the packaging is starting to look more like what I'd expect to be used in the final production unit. The packing box has all of the details printed on it instead of the original box which as you can see just had this information glued on and the logo was simply using a printed sticker. So let's get this unfolded and inside there's some notes letting me know some of these software changes that have been made. There's another difference inside this box and it looks like this is the custom case they had mentioned to me prior that would be used for the production units instead of the off-the-shelf Ugreen case the original engineering sample came in. The case does come standard with all of the absolute units. There's a USB Type-C to USB-A cable and that's about it. So let's take a look at the DVT2 engineering sample and see what improvements have been made to the hardware. Time to gently remove it from its protective bag and reveal the DVT2 Absolute. So here's a close-up of the D-pad, which is definitely one area I will be checking out shortly. I'm trying my best to capture on camera how this looks pressing down on the edges, as well as how it pivots. I will say it feels similar to the first model, but we will see how it performs in a little bit. It looks like the shoulder buttons still have that slightly rough finish at the top when I slide my finger across it, so this is similar to my original engineering sample. The trigger feels the same, and I do like how these feel. Overall, the plastic finishing is definitely feeling a bit more refined than with the first engineering model. The plastic has a different texture and it's matte and less prone to picking up fingerprints which again was something that the absolute team said was not final in that original engineering sample. Now please keep in mind it looks like this isn't the final finish on the back as the final production units should have a texture on the back for extra grip. It does still feel pretty nice and comfortable in the hands. I did know that the plastic is no longer as rough in the bottom corners when holding against the palm of my hands so that is nice to see. Another area that was going to be changed was the face buttons and they said they will be switching to a different style membrane and these definitely do feel different than my previous model. I will say that I kind of liked the way it felt on the first one, but these press down nicely, but have slightly less travel and funkiness overall. Pressing down hard on the face buttons, and they do sit above the face, and once I get into gameplay, I will see how these perform, but I suspect these won't be much of an issue. The micro SD slot was definitely another point of concern for me with the original engineering sample that I received, and I'm happy to report this issue is now non-existent with the DVT2 sample. The micro SD card is easy to insert, eject, and work works as I expected to. This was something they said they were going to address previously and I am glad that they followed through with this. Okay, so booting this up for the first time, I had the usual Android setup, but I did want to show this specific screen since now that the software is getting a bit more fleshed out, there was this agreement page that had Tencent games on it, which again shows the obvious close relationship Tencent has with this product, or at least with the software side. Now, here at the main launcher screen, and you can see that this looks pretty familiar, but now we are greeted with something that is resembling a finished software experience, and you can see it has a welcome screen that guides us through some of the features of this handheld mode launcher. The initial screens talk about the ability to take screenshots, using the home button to return to the main screen, long pressing the home button to access the shortcuts, changing the colors of the lit A, B, X, Y buttons, which can be turned off by the way, and finally the inclusion of essential cloud gaming apps that come pre-installed. This all looks pretty similar like before, but the Absolute Essential is a new addition and it looks like a simple tool that recommends some cloud gaming apps to download and install. Here's a quick look at all of the apps that are now installed on the device currently. So let's dive into the settings and see if anything looks different here, and quickly going through it, I didn't notice anything that stood out to me. Here's a look at the quick access menu, which you can reach by long pressing the home button, and for the most part has remained the same. Now, finally, one of the most important updates and additions to the software experience is the inclusion of Google Play services right from the start, which is something I was really sorely missing when I was spending a lot of time with the first engineering sample. And before we check out Google Play, they did add the ability to use swipe gestures within handheld mode out, so as you can see, I can use the Android swipe gesture to go back a prior screen, which is a good addition, and there will be a lot of these little software tweaks along the way since the first model went out. Okay, going back to the Google Play services, and you can see that I'm now browsing the Google Play Store on the Absolute. While I'm here, I'll grab a few apps to test with just for fun, and by the way, if you haven't heard, Baldur's Gate Dark Alliance just received a native Android port with full controller support. So let's now focus in on one of the bigger points of contention with the Absolute, which was the poor D-pad. If you recall from my in-depth video of the original engineering sample, I ranked the D-pad pretty low on the list. 
and it only felt slightly better than the one included with the G Cloud. I was having a horrible time pulling off simple combos and you can see that footage here which was pulled from that video. Now over on the DVT2 sample, and I'm just gonna flat out say it, it is a massive improvement over the original one I used. It's basically the complete opposite in terms of performance, where now I'm maybe gonna miss an occasional combo, but mostly I am hitting them with ease. I find the diagonals much easier to take, I'm able to move around a lot easier, and hitting combos from either direction is no issue. I'm really pleased to see how much of an improvement this is, and I think many will appreciate that this change was in fact made and really improves the experience using the directional pad. And looking at the face buttons again, I'm not noticing much difference in terms of performance despite them feeling just slightly different from the original model. I'm trying to compare it against the original one here, and again, I think the newer revision has a slightly shorter travel, but again, as I said, it presses down nicely, and playing with some games, I'm not noticing any impact to performance. I figured while working on this video, I might as well check out a few other gaming areas with the device that I didn't get to cover. First, I had to load up Baldur's Gate Dark Alliance, which I mentioned earlier, and turning the resolution setting all the way down, the game is surprisingly playable. I can definitely tell the frame rate dips at points, but yeah, kinda neat to see it running here. And now with the Play Store, we do have access to a lot of really neat games that I think will do well on this device, which I did touch upon during my in-depth video. I noticed that I never covered Nintendo DS emulation with Drastic, so I wanted to check that out here and show to you on camera how that looks and how it is running. Similar to the G Cloud, the nice thing about having a large 7 inch display is that we can put DS emulation in various screen layouts, and for example here I have the top screen as the main screen, with the bottom screen on the side in a much smaller size. Despite it being smaller, it's still readable so if you need to navigate the menus you still can. And this setup is awesome for a game like New Super Mario Bros. here, which really doesn't make much use of that bottom screen. So before we wrap up this quick follow-up, I wanted to also tear down the unit and compare it to the first engineering sample. Just like the original sample, this one also had a bunch of screws holding that secondary plate in place. However, there are some small changes which you can see here side by side. Let's get all these screws off, take a peek at the internals, and with the power of fast forward we can now examine the main board. You can see that the motherboard essentially looks identical with a small addition of text that reads a tribute to gamers. Just like in the first engineering sample, I'm not noticing anything off here. I think the unit is put together quite nicely with solid components here. Now the one thing I do want to take a look at here is the membrane being used for the D-pad and just how all of that looks now since they've made the adjustment. It's worth noting that the daughter board is actually stamped with the same 12-16-2022 date as the one from the first engineering sample. So we will do our usual editing magic and get all of these standard screws off to remove the daughter board and then take a closer look at the D-pad. Now that I'm able to take a look at this membrane, it does appear that the rubber itself is slightly thicker and not as flimsy as the prior version, and this minor adjustment may be the reason why the D-pad is hitting the diagonals a lot better now. So let's wrap this up, and I have to say it's great to see that there has been some positive changes made to the hardware and software experience for the Absolute. For a first timer to this space, I think that the build quality overall is really solid. It is a shame that we are stuck with that MediaTek MT8365, but hopefully we can see future products from Absolute that will expand on the capabilities of what they have established here. Now for the software side, there are still a few things I'd like to see the team add to the device. First, I'd like to see them add the ability to make adjustments to the analog stick dead zone and sensitivity, which is something I did mention in my prior video, and it is something that G Cloud has, and I have been told is coming to the absolute. The second thing I think is really needed is some type of gamepad mapping ability, which again is something that the G Cloud has and I think would be useful to have here. Similar to the analog stick adjustments, the Absolute team has told me that this is also planned for the software. Most of my feelings remain pretty much the same as in my in-depth video, and things like the build quality, display, comfort are all really solid. The D-pad is a massive improvement in this DVT2 sample, and at this point, the biggest negatives for me on the hardware side are the small switch style analog sticks and the severely underpowered SOC. Now, I'm still looking forward to seeing how things end up in the final retail version of the Absolute and to see what additional refinements are made for the launch of the product and beyond. I definitely recommend watching my two other videos on the device to get further information. I think if you are looking for a device that can stream well, 
on a nice large 7 inch 1080p screen with decent battery life and weight, this could serve you well at its lower Kickstarter price, which again is a price I hope the Absolute team can stay at post Kickstarter launch. The device is available for pre-order on their Kickstarter page, which I will have linked down below if you are interested in backing it or learning more about the handheld. As always, this is the Retro Tech Dad, and thank you so much for watching.